I think I have to start by, by thanking all of the, of the Chinese culture and the Chinese universities because they, they defined this medicine. It was always apprenticeship for many years and then uh, in the 60s they said, you know what, let's, or even the 50s, they said let's put this into our universities, let's put this into our hospitals. And they had to make a conscious decision to move it into the government program. So then they created universities, textbooks, and, and uh, hospitals with traditional Chinese medicine. And that's what we could copy. That's what we, if they, like Ayurvedic medicine hasn't done that in, in India yet. The Indian government hasn't said, you know what, this is a very uh, uh, valuable tradition. Let's put it into our universities, let's put it into our hospitals. It exists all over India, but it's in the old Chinese way, through apprenticeship only. So that's where the history starts. And of course, that's just in modern China. Before that, you know, so many thousands of years, they created the medicine. But I, I start by thanking uh, China and the, and the Chinese government for doing that, because without that, we really couldn't have an organized, well thought through program. That's first. Second is, our dedication here is to copy the best. And the, the Chinese government did it well, and that's what we've copied. So that's why we have this medicine here. A third part is, more and more leaders from China are telling me the future of traditional Chinese medicine is in the US. And I so I said, you know, I say, yeah, you know, you're very kind. Uh, the future is in China. You, it's your history. And they said, no, we're modernizing our medicine and you are dedicated to the traditional medicine and the the biggest the the, the leaders that I uh, respect the most in China uh, say that the traditional medicine is the best not this new mixture of traditional and modern that's what they say and they say that's they see that that's what we're dedicated to you know Chase mentioned these uh, specialization on the classics that's what permeates the, the program. So anyway, thanks to the Chinese, and that's how we got to where we are. Uh, the web that has no weaver, uh, if you're Chinese, you, you already know quite a bit about traditional Chinese medicine. Uh, if you're Caucasian, like myself, or born here, uh, this is a very good book to read. It's written by a Harvard uh, medical doctor who, in the old days, there were no schools like this here, so he had to go to Macau to learn, and actually the, 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 the greatest practitioners, American practitioners, uh, the oldest ones, had to learn through the apprenticeship model in the old days. So Ted Kapchuk was one of them, and he wrote this book, and many, uh, myself and many of my friends, uh, got their first introduction into the uh, medicine through this. So I, if you haven't read it already, I, I highly recommend it. Okay, so if you're looking at traditional Chinese medicine, you're going to get into all the details today. For me, the most important is uh, it offers you a meaningful life. And, you know, everybody has their, their own personal search that they have to do. What, what's going to be meaningful to me? Uh, it might be to be a nurse. It might be to be uh, a housewife, which for me is a very important word. It might be to be a computer uh, expert. All of these things are your own dreams. Uh, traditional Chinese medicine, both in what it teaches you and how you can serve other people, if that's what you want, will give you a very meaningful life. A healthy life, I put down because I, I went through the master's and doctoral program thinking that I would become a practitioner. And then later, the universe was telling me, no, uh, focus on education, don't, don't be a, a practitioner. So I'm a lot on my computer, because we have regulations and reports and so forth. But if you're a practitioner, you're on your feet, you're sitting down with your patient, and you're going making herbs. So the, the lifestyle you have as being a practitioner enhances your health. It does, you don't have to compensate and then take long walks and make sure you exercise, because the, the activity itself is healthy. And I, we can't take that for granted anymore. For me, that's pretty special. I'm going to go and tell you a little bit what's happened in the U.S. and worldwide, and a little bit about the job and uh, career opportunities. 
So you all know it's a very old medicine. Uh, the Shan Han Lung, when I meet some, uh, some of our students have done uh, preceptorships and then scholarships in China. And they go there to the university and say, who's the best practitioner I should study with at the hospital? And then they say, oh, this gentleman here, he sees 100 patients a day. So he goes there and, and asks, can I be your student? I'm here on a scholarship, uh, which actually the Chinese government uh, was offering. And he comes back and he tells me, he told me I need to memorize the Shan Han Lo. That's the way I can be a good herbal doctor. So even though this was written 2,000 years ago, the most successful practitioners are basing their practice on, on these classics. The Nobel Prize uh, that was uh, in 2015 for medicine was, uh, uh, was won by a, a Chinese lady uh, who did some research. I'll, I'll show you her picture in a moment. This constant refinement is important because as you know, in, in modern medicine, here's the latest and newest, <laughs> but it really hasn't been tried for very long. So it may have some miraculous effects, but then they'll say, oh, you know, actually now that we look at it more uh, in depth and, and over a period of time, it's not that effective. So to have something that's been given to us after many years of experimentation it is really a, a, a blessing. And of course, the, the concepts that uh, uh, medicine uses are, are very powerful for both your own life uh, as well as for helping patients. Um, so, the, the NIH did a paper, uh, I think it was in 2007, because a lot of MDs were saying, you know, what is this acupuncture? This is all quackery. So the NIH, the NIH, by the way, is the uh, research center for all of medicine in the U.S. multi uh, million dollar, multi billion dollar uh, budget. So they did a, a research on acupuncture, and the results were, you know, it, it, this is for real. Uh, one, the, one of the uh, there's a point on the little toe that will turn over a baby that's going to be born uh, butt first instead of head first in breach, and there's a point which will do that. And they found that when they stimulated that point, uh, they could see uh, the MR. Anyway, they could see other parts of the body and how it did that. Uh, actually, I'm mixing up the two, two researches. The one they did was uh, there's a point that helps vision, and the MRIs uh, could, would show the part of the brain and how that uh, vision part was being stimulated. Uh, the Institute of Medicine is a big research center. And they had, their largest conference was on alternative medicine, so it's a very hot topic among them. Uh, the WHO, uh, how many of you know what ICD-9 and ICD-10 is? Raise your hand. Only one person. Okay. So if you're in the medical profession, every doctor all over uh, the, the planet, whether it's Asia, Africa, or America, uh, has to use a special code that's developed by the World Health Organization in Geneva. And they say, if you have headache, th this is the code you use. It, it, and, and every doctor uses the same. The ICD-9 uh, just uh, finished, now it's 10, and 11 is in development. And this is a draft copy of, of ICD-11. And um, so there's two. So this is the normal ICD-11. This is all Western. And this IC is ICTM. So now the International Code for Diseases, for the classification of diseases, includes traditional Chinese medicine terminology. And, and the book is in, in English, uh, Chinese, Japanese, and Korea. So this international standard will come out. Uh, it was supposed to be 2018, but now I heard it's 2017 going to come out in 2017. That means every doctor in Africa, Europe, Asia, America will see a code both of Western medicine and of traditional Chinese medicine. That's, that's very important. Um, I think I have a slide on it. If you go to any of the healthcare centers uh, here uh, in our area, whether it's Kaiser or Sutter or the big cancer centers, they all have acupuncture now. And alternative medicine. That wasn't the case 15 years ago, but, but it is now. 
and Island Hospital uh, has really embraced uh, having acupuncture and acupuncture students being there. Uh, recognized throughout the world, uh, I, we, I attend uh, what's called the World Federation of Chinese Medicine Societies. And there's representatives from Austria, Australia, uh, South Africa, you name it, every part. And what they report is this medicine, just as it's growing in the U.S., is, is growing worldwide. Our graduates are also <laughs> very spread out. We have some graduates working in Europe, others working in South Africa, and of course uh, in the U.S. Uh, this is Dr. Tu, uh, a 400-year-old Chinese text, uh, said, boil the herb and it'll treat, uh, no, uh, take, uh, take the extract from this herb and it'll treat malaria. And she had to research it for 20 years because she kept on boiling it. And it says it doesn't work. I don't know what this text is all about. But then they reread it. It's extracted juice from this herb. So they didn't use heat. They extracted the juice. And now it's become the uh, drug used all over uh, the world for the treatment of malaria. And in the literature, if you look at the BBC News or anything, you'll see how they recognize uh, traditional Chinese medicine and its role. Uh, you're going to get a, a lot of this throughout the day. Uh, you know, just why are we called five branches? And it's because these five branches to health are very important. And uh, sometimes we go, <laughs> we, we go in the other direction. If you do the energetics, the Tai Chi, you, you may not need any of the other four. Uh, and if you need something, then, you know, do the exercise and the diet, then you don't need. But if you're not doing those properly, then do massage, acupuncture. And herbal medicine is, is a very effective medicine. Well, the, the most effective. Um, so we have, we, have, uh, five, we have five programs all together. Uh, Three are at this, what we call entry level. Uh, it's the four-year doctorate and masters of traditional Chinese medicine. So that's, that's what you would be earning. And then at, once you complete that, you can continue on to this two-year postgraduate doctoral and, or a three-year postgraduate joint uh, doctoral, uh, which is a DAOM PhD. And uh, we have, I think, now about uh, six graduates who've done uh, the full range. All, all the way to, to the PhD. And this PhD is recognized in the US. Uh, I will say that uh, this, this program, which is a postgraduate program, is getting more and more attention because uh, hospitals and cancer centers, they, they're still uh, employing our graduates with the masters and the, and the first professional doctorate. Uh, but more, a lot of them are saying, we want people with the DAOM level. So that would be four years plus two years. Uh, but uh, yeah, both are important. That, that's it. Uh, th this master of acupuncture is not very popular here, because here you have to know the herbal medicine. But we have some people coming from other states where it's acupuncture only. And they say, you know what, I want to study acupuncture only. So that, that's only three years. The master and doctor of traditional Chinese medicine is the four years and then you can do an additional two years or three years for the postgraduate doctor. Uh, you're going to get uh, a full <laughs> uh, presentation on this, uh, but it is important, you know, this is the traditional Chinese medicine, the clinical and, and the academic. Uh, but notice, uh, no, actually it's these two, but notice how much Western medicine is taught. And that's very important, and as Chase will share, you know, he can be uh, totally comfortable at Highland Hospital because of that yellow part. We teach the Western medicine quite seriously, and that's what allows you then to uh, partner with other practices. And this is a picture of the Highland Hospital, uh, the faculty who, uh, and students who were studying there at the time. The reason I put this slide up is because part of the residency is our students have to give a presentation to the MDs uh, at the hospital about a, a topic, a 20 minute presentation. They do that amongst themselves and they invited us to do that. And our, our students were quite nervous in the beginning, but they made a big impression when they made the presentation. Uh, 
collaborative medicine is, is you know, we say integrative medicine a lot, uh, but collaborative is an important concept because uh, Western medicine is very good uh, in itself. Traditional Chinese medicine is very good in itself. And if sometimes you'll need one, sometimes you'll need the other, sometimes you'll need both. But this concept of collaborating with each other rather than integrating them together. And many leaders in China have told me, be careful not to integrate. It weakens each of the medicines. But collaborate is, is a good idea. So that's uh, the opportunities uh, for five branches, not all schools, not all schools, but for five branches, 80% of our graduates are in practice. And that's because the, the training you get here is very solid, um, and it's oriented towards being a successful uh, practitioner. Uh, mostly people go into group practices or so, solo practices, of course now more and more at the hospital and cancer centers. Uh, two of our graduates are working at the leading cancer center in Georgia. And that's, the cancer centers are probably the leading healthcare practitioners in the U.S. because it's a very serious condition. And they're welcoming our profession. I mentioned on cruise ships because before you get established, uh, a lot of our graduates uh, are, are working on cruise ships. These are the, if you go to Sutter uh, or Kaiser or Osher, that, that's the one for UCSF or Stanford, you, you'll see the integrative medicine that they're, they're now offering. The U.S. Department of Labor uh, gives uh, every year, uh, you know, what, what profession is needing the most people. And healthcare practitioners and technical is number one. And if you're considering becoming a lawyer, think twice. There's, there's so many, they're not really in need. But it's good to be interested in a profession that is in demand. And it makes a big difference. Uh, Obamacare includes acupuncture, insurance covers acupuncture. We are primary health care practitioners, that's the highest level. Uh, in, in the beginning we had to be under an MD, now we're primary health care. The collaborative medicine is important. And, and the last part is becoming more and more important. If we have, need emergency care, yes we go to the hospital, but most patients are looking for something that's safe and effective. And the pharmaceuticals uh, have a lot of a lot of dangers. Uh, this you'll you'll hear uh, more than uh, more than once uh, today, so I won't go through it. Uh, we do have a very pa high passing rate. That bit of the program uh, prepares you for that. The reputation for me, it, it kind of was all always a word. Oh yeah, we have a good reputation. But then when I would ask people, I say why why. Do you, do you think five branches is so good? And they say, you, you graduate the best practitioners. So I mean, that, is, that is the bottom line. And because of that, we, we do have a very good reputation. And if ever, <laughs> one of our graduates went to China and she was astonished. She said, boy, your reputation in China is unbelievable. And that's because we've invited all of the best uh, practitioners from China to teach in our postgraduate doctoral. So they got and the medicine, uh, studying the medicine comes back to you. And th that's why I think it's a good idea to study traditional Chinese medicine, even if you don't become a, a practitioner. Because all, all these things we know is how we stay healthy, feel good, uh, have, a, have a positive attitude. So it's just to remember all of those things. And for me, it's great that you get to study a medicine which asks us to do it and then helps other people to, to do the same. Thank you very much.